Grace and I are at the coal mine today and what we're looking for are the three tunnels that were dug from the foreshore into the um, bank here. Just here is a sign that says beach, with an arrow pointing here and we'll head down these steps here. And at the bottom of the steps there's some signage there um, you can read but the real action starts over here if you turn left at the bottom of the um, steps um, towards this cleared area where Gracie is in the distance. Coal was discovered in the middle of 1833 at what was to be known as the coal mines. A seam of two metres thick was spotted on the shoreline when the coast was being surveyed. The information was laid, relayed back to the authorities at Port Arthur which the settlement there commenced about three years before. So it's not quite two metres thick, I must admit, but um, we'll just take that as an artistic representation. The first tunnel, also called an adit, and I'll call them tunnels from now on, was dug around October of 1833 and had a length of about 60 metres. Coal was first shipped from this tunnel to Hobart in June of 1834, a total of 327 tonnes were shipped that year and another 2,400 the following. Now where Gracie's brother precariously laying down there um, is what I believe the entrance to the first 1834 tunnel. Uh, an 1837 map of the tunnel shows it placed about 5 metres from the southern edge of the platform and the southern edge of the platform is right there um, where the middle tree is between those three trees and it showed at 35 meters in from the edge of the ocean side of the platform it also showed us on that map that where they commenced the tunnel it was right beside a sandstone fault line which they used to call freestone back then but on the right hand side of the tunnel as they commenced tunneling uh, there was sandstone now what I think happened was the coal was brought out of the tunnel there and brought down to here things change over time but it would have been brought down this area here and out here onto the platform uh, awaiting um, shippage to Hobart where Grace is patiently relaxing there is what I believe the site of where a aqueduct was situated or the entrance to an aqueduct in December of 1834 we commenced on a shaft at the top of the hill and you can see my rope line may be travelling up there um, due needing to allow air into the tunnel as it was becoming danger of becoming toxic so the tunnel is the first tunnel that we've just seen they dug in so far and then um, due to the, um, the gas in there they had to get an air down to the miners somehow so a shaft was built at the top of that hill a depth of 21 meters was reached by April 1835 where they may have reached the cold seam at that time this shaft has never been located, but it was located approximately 85 metres above where the aqueduct exited at the foreshore. So basically travelling up the rope line again, keep going up from where Gracie is to the top of the hill, 85 metres. That would put you roughly in the area where that shaft was. The aqueduct connected the lower coal seam at the uh, shaft to this location to drain the water from the tunnels. There was a reservoir located at the entrance where the water was held and then piped to the end of the platform to be bumped into the ocean so it would not erode the foreshore. So the water would have been exiting the aqueduct in this direction here. And if we come down to this location here, there's a large reservoir. Unfortunately, it's under all these trees. Grace and I just didn't have it in us to clean it up, clean it up. but it travels along here 
and very close to where the entranceway of the first tunnel was. So the water was stored here in this reservoir and then they had some type of pipe that went to the end of the platform maybe made with animal hide um, I don't know but the reason why they had the pipe going out there is as I said before they didn't want all this water washed away um, surface area washed away with water coming out of the um, aqueduct and they didn't want to pump it just over on the side of the foreshore because that would have washed away part of the foreshore or under the um, platform so they pumped it all the way out to there. Now, keep in mind, uh, we're going to be visiting a third tunnel in a moment, but this is all covered up now because from that third tunnel, instead of using the jetty here, which was um, only capable of servicing um, ships that could take maybe 100 tonnes because it was so shallow, uh, they built a tramway along here that all the, went down to the southern point of the coal mines and then they had a jetty there that went out about 300 metres odd in the end and then the bigger ships could um, dock there and take 300 tonnes of coal out. So right where we're standing now is that tramway and I believe that they had that wharf already in mind when they built this third tunnel we're going to see so the water had to be removed from this area here um, if they had maybe masonry under, um, under here or some other type of thing or whether they had wooden boards going across the top um, so the water could continue to come out of the aqueduct while at the same time they could have the trolleys full of coal going down to the furthest jetty. The third tunnel was started from the 1835 shaft that's the shaft I was talking about before uh, the new shaft on the top of the hill and it travelled about a hundred metres or so and I believe it travelled to this location here yeah, I have a map of 1837 and it shows this tunnel was located approximately 10 metres in from the northern edge of the jetty and that mound of dirt there is where the jetty starts so we're about 10 metres in and it travelled in 30 metres from the edge of the platform at the ocean side. So this puts me in this location here. Now we're on the southern side of Gracie by about 10 metres and it has here um, a depression, a channel that travels down here towards the uh, beach and I've often been told or believed that this was the tramway that came out of the um, third tunnel that they dug. I don't believe that's the case. I think this is some type of drainage and this platform here we're seeing is on the edge of where the tunnel entrance was and that rope line's going down there which Grace is just on the other side of that log there but where that rope is is where they would have tunnelled in already and this area here was a drain to remove the water from the platform area. As Gracie says, if in doubt, follow the coal. On this side here, we have no coal slack. Um, there is a lot of slippage. The bank there is all um, falling down, but there is no real coal that I can see. But we come over to here, and then we start to see bits and pieces of it. But the more we get up to this area here, where I believe the tunnel actually was, uh, keep in mind that they blew it up with dynamite, uh, but coming down here, on my spring line, then we come to places like this, where I have nothing but coal. So this area here I believe is the, um, the tramway where it came out of the tunnel and then it headed down in this direction here straight down there towards the platform um, 
for the coal to be um, unloaded out of the carts and the weight for the um, shippage up to Hobart. Keep in mind that large mound you can see now probably was not there originally. Yeah. Further evidence I think of um, having this here as the entry point of the third tunnel can be seen on this side here. And again, there is coal slack everywhere which we're not seeing on the um, other location there. Often this location um, up in here in the um, bush which is about 20 metres from where um, that stump is which is where I'm proposing the entrance to the um, third tunnel was. Um, this area here is often said where they actually dug in but if you go right up the back there you can see on the northern side of where this um, depression hits the um, road that goes down to Plunker Point, the new modern road, there's a convict road and that convict road abruptly stops at the back here um, instead of travelling all the way to the settlement which it would have done originally. So what I um, believe is that they just used so much dynamite here that uh, it just tore down the sides of these banks here and then over time, because it's basically nothing but sand up there, sand, a tiny little bit of mudstone, um, but in this area here, the um, soil is slowly but surely slipping down and down the cliffs, and then coming down to this area here, as you can see. And this area is just going to get wider and wider. Um, basically what's happening up at the main shaft, um, where erosion there is slowly wearing away the edges of the um, shaft, making it a lot bigger than what it actually was originally. A platform was built on the foreshore, um, standing in probably approximately the middle of where it was, and it held 300 to 400 tonnes of coal while it was waiting to be loaded on ships to go to Hobart. Now I've covered this platform in my video Convict Jetty number one, and I took that footage about 18 months ago prior to when I started to use tape measures, ropes, and um, pretend I knew what I'm doing. Um, I'm now going to give you a detailed explanation of the platform. Um, hopefully it'll give you a better insight than that previous video did. Um, but what we're going to do is wait for different tide marks, um, which will help explain things a little bit better, I hope. As glorious as it is down here, we've still got a couple of hours to wait to the high tide mark. Just notice where this groove is here and where this post is here with the um, pink marking. We've now reached high tide mark um, but as you can see along the bank there when there's a storm the water does get a lot higher. So now we'll wait for low tide and then I can give you a tour of the platform. This platform is the key to working out where the uh, tunnels were originally. Now, what I do know is it's 69 metres in length down to the southern end in the distance there, not um, 66 as some of the um, researchers have advised, which did put a spanner in the works, but we worked it out at the end. Now, between where that piece of timber is, and the groove cut into here is 2.4 metres. So each 2.4 metres, they had a cross section running down the beach. Um, it may not have been the same timber, but all the way down there, the um, 69 metres. Now from this cross section here to where the platform went out is 10.5 metres. And I'll show you in a minute um, how I got that figure. So what this tells us is where this cross section is here was actually where the foreshore married up with the platform. And as you can see there, this is not the case today. I have approximately five metres from where the edge of the platform touched the foreshore, which is this mark here. And there's the foreshore there. So you can see the rising sea levels have certainly had 
um, a damaging effect down at the coal mines. I'm now at the southern end of the platform and this here is the first groove in the timber where the cross section would have been um, heading down the northerly direction the 69 meters. Now we come along here there are no other cross sections so if there was another cross section it would be 2.4 meters which would put me around here so there are no markings so again this is approximately where the foreshore would have married up with the platform in 1834 and you can see the pink marker there it's a good five six meters to where the current foreshore is now if we walk back towards the northern end you can see these cross sections they appear about every seven meters uh, some are different sizes this one here is a little bit thicker um, there going out um, to the edge of the jetty and bear with me there's another one here heading out other than seven odd meters we get to this one heading out and this is where the party starts but here we have a large cross section and I believe this is the end of the platform which gives me 10.5 back to where those grooves were on the um, northern and southern end so 10.5 meters give or take a couple of inches and then coming to here there's a large log heading out straight out in this direction and then we come back to the end of the platform platform and heading out here is another large log and these two large logs would have been the supports of a jetty that went out to the ballast dump there or close to the ballast dump about 100 110 meters so from this point here that gives us 10.5 back to where that marker is and that is where the platform married up with the foreshore and then from there I worked out the figures of where the tunnels were in relation to where I'm standing now. Just for the record where these two posts are that's the northern end of where the um, jetty goes out and we've got 4.5 across to here where the southern uh, end of the jetty went out. I'm back at our first tunnel entrance and as I showed you before just to the right there is a sandstone um, fault line. Now that sandstone fault line unfortunately for the convicts traveled all the way up to where the third tunnel was. So when they built the aqueduct they had to tunnel through about 25 metres of sandstone straight through there um, before they got to the um, coal um, located near the um, bottom of the shaft that was on top of the hill. And then the poor guys down at the third tunnel, they had about 50 metres, I think, of sandstone to go through. Um, before they could link up that third tunnel down there with the shaft that was on top of the hill. I'm just on the northern edge of the aqueduct entrance and not only did they have to build the tunnel that goes up to the shaft on top of the hill, they also had to go through the sandstone and build a smaller tunnel that linked up with that original first tunnel 
and the reason why is that was used to feed extra air into the tunnel about halfway long and that means air could get up into the area where the convicts are working through the first tunnel via the um, air coming this tunnel here and via the shaft on the top of the hill. Once the third tunnel was in operation, this first, first tunnel um, was no longer needed for mining purposes. It was solely used as a um, tunnel to feed air into the um, pits below. Now, what they may have had, and there's a record of um, fires being lit on the beach here, or on the foreshore, um, they may have had fires here um, with the hot air going in to the tunnel, and then somehow that worked to draw as it rose, possibly um, through the shaft, it drew cooler air in, um, some principle like that. I'm not exactly sure how it worked via the tunnels. I understand the principle using a shaft, but I'm not entirely sure how it worked with the tunnels. And the question is often asked um, daily by me is, will we ever see the entrances to these tunnels again? Now we know, well, I think we know um, the location of them if we started digging here, will we see the um, tunnel? And just looking at this terrain here and keeping in mind that, that rope didn't get itself up that hill um, by itself, all this bank here is slipping down. You can see the way that's undercut the trees there. You can see the lean on the trees. So it won't be um, too much longer in time um, before there's another big slide. But every cloud has a silver lining and what I expect is when this bank here finally does have a big slide all the way down to here, over time whatever soil up there will be washed away and then you should just see the sandstone fault line and in that sandstone fault line one would hopefully see the remains of the tunnel. Just depends on how far in um, they laid the dynamite to close up these tunnels. Again, at the third tunnel, we'd have the same problem if we dug into the hill there, as that hill there is also um, slowly but surely coming down. Uh, we'd have to wait again to that hill was exposed, and then they tunnelled through sandstone as well here to get to the shaft at the top of the hill. And like the um, aqueduct, we may then see what's inside. It's unsure when um, the tunnels and shafts were closed. Um, I believe from a little bit of reading I've got is it was done over different time periods. Uh, the Tasman Council was complaining in 1920 that some of the shafts were still open. Um, but I don't know if um, these tunnels were part of that complaint. In August of 1834, at the bottom of the shaft that was dug at the top of the hill, the Commandant of Port Arthur decreed that four solitary cells should be built into the coal seam um, 16 metres underground. These cells are one metre wide, almost two metres long, 2.1 high. These were known as the underground solitary cells, not the ones on the current site that were built later on. Now, I'm currently 60 metres above the entrance to the aqueduct. Uh, the solitary cells were located in that location. So I believe where my marker is there, that if one was to dig down approximately in this area here, the um, 15, 16 metres, one would hit the solitary cells. And I'm not 100% sure because the angle that came up from the aqueduct um, it went slightly northwest which doesn't give me quite a straight line. That's why I put the string line up there to give myself a bit of a guide. But um, I'm going to do some more work on this when I go back home. They could well be in this area here. Below this area here. As Gracie waits impatiently, we have to question when this platform and jetty were built. You can see it was built by 1837, but Let's go back to 1834. They shipped out about 340 tonnes of coal 
but they only had 12 men down here, half were miners, the other half were labourers. And in 1835, they shipped out just under two and a half thousand tons, and they had about 20 people, 20 convicts, working down here. So to ship that amount of coal, there must have been some type of jetty platform down here. And it just boggles my mind to think that what probably happened was that this constructionless jetty took place in 1834 with that limited amount of manpower. Uh, we know the convicts built their own accommodation down here because the tools to build that accommodation were late coming over from Port Arthur. Uh, but there is no record of them building this platform. Maybe they had a small temporary jetty going out in the first year and extended this to the platform and jetty in the second year but you really need to be out close to the ballast dump um, as the water is so shallow here the boats couldn't have come right up on the shore and have the coal just dumped in there with baskets uh, the trees would have been a lot bigger back then this is all just new growth and it's all very sickly growth at that most of it uh, so maybe the trees were right on the shoreline and they could drop these big 10 metre long leg uh, length of timber that travel out and then build the frame around it. Uh, I don't know. Uh, the other idea I have in the back of my head is as they were bringing bricks over from Port Arthur, maybe they also brought over logs, something pre-cut or something over there, the bigger ones, like some IKEA flat pack. But Probably like many things here, we'll never know. This is Gracie and I's last trip down here till next year. We'll be taking a busman's holiday uh, maybe next month with some good friends from Canada. Um, but we'll have no footage until next year where we hope to um, have some new areas to visit for you and maybe update some of the older ones. So it's goodbye from us, there you have it, the three tunnel entrances at the coal mines. I'm now standing north of the platform, um, approximately maybe 60 odd metres. And then on the beach I found this, which I don't think has been recorded before. And there's one, two, three, four pieces of timber. Now, this piece of timber here comes all the way up to here and it travels along here. It's about three metres long in length. And then we have one piece there, one piece there, one piece there. Now, those pieces are about two metres in length. And the distance between this one, this one, and that one is exactly the same. As they're exactly the same, I'd say that this is not just driftwood that's washed up on the beach. Why would this be down here? Well, it happens to be almost in front of the lime kiln, which is just straight in through there in those bushes. Uh, and as I like to make a wild guess on just about everything down here, known or unknown, this may have been a little um, type of slip slip it slip yard type thing i'm not too sure what the word is but maybe they pulled the boat up here um, they would have been fossicking for lime all the way around to lime bay um, the shells to use for um, the kiln um, and maybe when they brought the boat back they pulled it up onto the shore under here and keep in mind but let's not go through all that again but the shore would have been shoreline would have been just about where this piece of timber ends and there's our five metres on where the shoreline is washed away just on the other side of that um, log there.